Welcome back. Today we're talking about ANOVA or analysis of variance. We're going to be looking at R. I'm going to show you a practical example and I'm going to walk you through the code. You're going to have access to the data that I'm using so you can replicate everything that I'm doing at home. So let's do this. Let's jump right in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. So the data set that I'm looking at is the uh, Gapminder data. And if you want to get that, you install the Gapminder package and then you say library Gapminder and then just Gapminder will give you the data, you say view Gapminder and that's gonna give you this data set right here. It's a set of countries, their continents, the different years, life expectancy at those years, population size and GDP per capita. In this example, we're gonna ask the question, do they have different average life expectancies? Or are they all the same? Okay, now I've got a little graphic beneath me right here on the screen, and that is a summary of the data. And we can see the little diamonds in these in these box plots are the average life expectancies. And looking at the data, it looks as if they're different. The question we're asking is, is that different difference statistically significant? Okay, so let's jump right in. And by the way, this is really, really easy to do. So the important part of this lesson is understanding what question you're trying to ask. The code is super easy. Before we look at the code, I just want to let you know I've got this cheat sheet for ANOVA. This is basically everything in this lesson and it's got all the different sort of uh, how to interpret the data, et cetera, et cetera. Here's that little visualization that you saw a few seconds ago. Now, the nice thing about this cheat sheet, and you can access this by the way for free, is I also have all the code for everything. So this is the data visualization that you just saw. There's all the code there and the code has annotations. You can just hover over these little annotations and you can see why that particular line of code was written. I've also got the same data summarized in a table here and here's the code to create that table again with the annotations. So you can get this cheat sheet at learnmore365.com, create a free account. There's a, there's a resource library and you can find this and other resources for your R coding. Okay, let's jump right back into the lesson. Okay, so here's the code for the ANOVA and then I'm gonna run this code. We're gonna look at the results and we'll just talk through once again how to interpret the results. We've said library tidyverse to get uh, functions in place. Gapminder, we want that. Here's the Gapminder data. We pipe that into filter. We're filtering just for year 2007. So remember, there were lots of years. We're just gonna look at the 2007. That's the most recent data in this particular data set. And then we've now got a data object with the year that we're interested in. We pipe that into analysis of variance, this function here. Now remember, whenever you work in the tidyverse, when you pipe your data object into the next line of code, it always assumes that the thing that you're piping in is the first argument for the next function, right? So it's making the assumption that this filtered data set Gapminder wants to be looked at as the first argument after the opening of the parenthesis here. And in the case of the ANOVA function, it's not the first. And for many functions, that's perfect. Happy days, you know, the data object sits as the first argument for the function. In the case of ANOVA, as was the case with the t-test, this function has been designed to look for the data at the end as the last as the last argument. So that's why we've got here dot equals dot at the end. Okay, and the dot is just sort of saying take what was piped in and pop it over here. Right, so just to get that out of the way. The next thing is, let's look at the arguments. Life expectancy, that is our numeric variable. That is the variable that it's going to, to create. It's going to figure out what the average is for each of the categories in the categorical variable. So we say by continent. So the little tilde there is like a by, what life expectancy by continent dot equals dot. And then we pipe that into summary. Okay, and let's run that. And boom shakalaka, the thing that I want you to look at, and I'm not gonna go through all, interpret every single little bit of, and piece about this. I just want you to get a sense more or less of how to do this. There's the p-value there. The p-value is less than two times 10 to the power of negative 16. In other words, very, 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 very small. In other words, it's extremely unlikely, it's, there's a very, very low probability that if it were the case, that in actual fact, all of these continents had the same life expectancy, that our sample would land up with the differences that we are seeing. It's, so, it's extremely unlikely. Usually we have a cutoff of less than 5%. In this case, it's much, much smaller than 5%, but we say that allows us to reject that null hypothesis, the null hypothesis that all of the continents have got the same life expectancy and accept 
the fact that what we're seeing is real, that th this is statistically significant. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Please uh, subscribe, leave comments, like, etc., etc. There's a little card on the screen at the moment. You can click on that and you can go to learnmore365.com and you can get that cheat sheet that I